Welcome back, everyone. And thank you so much to uh, Red Hook for the house. It's very, very nice. Let's switch over to our default input here. Welcome, welcome. So we've got a pretty fun day today. Let's pull up the schedule. So we are in stream three. And I know I went over this uh, last stream, but I will go over it again. Um, we're going to be covering the inventory system. So things like stack limits, purchase prices, sell prices, stuff like that. Uh, we're also going to be going over loot tables. We're going to finally be creating that loot table for the trinket set that we created last stream. And um, we're going to be creating a couple new loot tables for the potions, which is the next topic. And uh, that brings me to one of the points. Um, we have new assets that you can download or you can make your own, of course. If you type uh, exclamation point links in chat, you will obtain the document for... Um, do I have it on here? Or not? pull that up quickly then let's pull it up over here and not Spotify that was an accident so in my link dump I have the stream three assets I will post the link to that in chat it's a little bit long I apologize and of course, if you are watching on YouTube, I should have the link below the video. If I don't, someone tell me, I gotta fix that. But it should be a pretty easy uh, stream. It shouldn't take too long. I, to be honest, I thought the last one wouldn't take too long, and it did. So we'll see how long this one takes. And hello to everybody who are watching from Red Hook Studios. I do have that chat open. Um, if you want to talk to me through there, or you can come to my channel directly. It is entirely up to you. However, if you type a question, the YouTube uh, people will not see it if you're in Red Hook Studios chat since my chat overlay only works with my stream uh, chat. We are free to watch, lurk, or ask questions. Do whatever you'd like. Hopefully you will learn something. And uh, let's get started. So one thing I have done um, in between uh, before we even get to our modding assets, is I copied the repo for the vanilla game uh, and put it up here, and that way we can quickly revert changes. Are the audio pops still happening? I wonder if my mic's going bad. I could switch real quickly. Real quickly. Um, let me see if I can just switch it over. Midstream. There we go. That should be better. I guess my mic's just going bad. It was only a $30 headset. It's a shame, too. It's not a bad one. I just gotta get a boom for this mic. Otherwise, you might hear things like clicking. Not that bad, though. Alright, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, we are uh, working with a repo of the vanilla game now. And that's helpful just because I can quickly revert like my first stream explained with the uh, SVN. Alright. So we're going to come in here actually uh, because we don't have the files in our mod. We don't, we don't have any of the files that control stack limits or sale prices or set prices. Thankfully though, those are all in very uh, easy to read, pretty small files right in inventory. The ones we're gonna be worried about are these ones here, these six. And as you can see, they control the different items that you find in game. Um, here we have currency, then we have gems. Um, these are extra stack limits, like for the antiquarian, since she, of course, raises the stack limit for your gold. Um, and system configs, like how many 
items the store should be able to hold, etc., etc., quest items, and then supplies, so things like firewood, um, uh, any other like laudanum and stuff, that'll all be in there. So if we open up the currency one, we have in our notepad plus plus right here, you can see that we have our golden heirlooms, since those are considered currency by the game. There are things that you collect and then you spend. And very simply, you see we have types, the IDs, and these can kind of be considered subtypes since um, heirlooms are a single type and then there are different subtypes of heirlooms. The base stack limit, and that's the, of course, just the stack limit that these items will stack to while in dungeon. The purchase gold value, and this is used when you're purchasing them from the store in game and the sell gold value, which is how much they'll sell for when you return from a quest. And of course, golden heirlooms are kept, they're not sold. If we opened up something like the supplies here, you can see that our supplies like shovels, bandages, skeleton keys, all that stuff, that sells at the end of a quest, and you can set the price right here. And shovels are, of course, purchasable, but firewood is not. Now, a good question some of you might have is where the store items are actually controlled for. And that's very simple. Within campaign, if you go to uh, provision, you can see uh, a key, mildly lengthy file. And the first section we have is the starting length inventory item list. These are items that are given to you by default depending on the length of a dungeon. Now lengths of dungeons are zero, which there aren't any that are zero in the game. There's one, two, three, four, and five. So you can see short here, no firewood. You can see medium, long, exhausting, and then five, I believe, is the new one that they added with Crimson Court. And of course, you're not given any firewood for it. Next in this file, you have raid starting hero class items. These are the items that heroes start with if you bring them along in a dungeon. And of course, these items cannot be sold or removed before a dungeon, only in dungeon. Um, you can see right away the Houndmaster will bring two dog treats. And then finally, oh, before the confirmed ad, as I'll get to that in a second, that's pretty new, um, the default store lists. These are the items for the different lengths that the store will sell. You can see just right here for short dungeons, of course, you have provisions, which are food. Selling 18, you have shovels, anti-venom bandage, all, all the goodies. And finally, confirmed datas are for each length, how much food uh, is recommended that you bring. And of course, if you bring less than this amount, a pop-up will appear and tell you that, um, you know, you're crazy, you should bring more, uh, you're going to die if you don't, stuff like that. Whatever it says, it says. So we're going to be adjusting a couple of the stack limits in the base game. Um, and we are going to get into the the um, the store items, but not until we do potions. So I'm going to skip over that for now. And we're just going to go ahead and copy the inventory folder over to our mod. And right away, there's a couple ones that I know we won't need. For instance, we won't need the mode inventory or mode supply. We can come in here and we can adjust a couple of these stack limits. For instance, we won't need extra stack limits because that's just for the antiquarian. Um, system configs is only for the store and not quite sure if we will need that at the moment. I don't think we will. No, we definitely won't need that. Um, but I do want to come in here and I want to set stack limits for all quest items to be three. And that's very simple. Simply. Change all of these stack limits for the quest items to three. And that way quest items for activate or gather quests will instantly stack. And that way you won't have to worry about um, 
having three inventory spaces for all of your items. And then I don't think we're going to do any gems. Currency, I think it's probably pretty good where it's at. But for supply, I would like to come in here and set firewood stackable to five. And now there isn't anything that actually gives us five firewood to start off with. But I think it's pretty safe simply because nobody will know the stack limit unless it's reached. So you could even set this to 999 and it wouldn't have any difference in effect compared to 5 if that limit of 5 is never reached. But I think that's a little ridiculous, so let's just set it to be safe. And that is simply uh, the easiest way to adjust stack limits. Stack limits are very, very easy to modify, and you'll instantly see them in-game. Of course, um, if we were to... Hmm, what's the best way to... Show this off. Uh, I would say probably. Let's go ahead and do something right now. Let's set the torches to 10, which I think is also a pretty decent stack limit. And if we save that, we come over here and we copy inventory over. We're going to do another town start. And we, we go to embark, and we're just going to throw four random heroes in for this. I'm going to do a little dev cheats to give myself some stuff. If we come in here, we can instantly see that torches are now stacked into 10. Hey, Solar. Uh, are you using the Penumbra theme for Windows? Nice stream, by the way. Congrats from Spain. I'm using a special purchasable theme from uh, cleodesktop.com. That person makes a ton of Windows themes and it was only like two or three bucks to purchase it. So it's really awesome. And I get a whole bunch of updates for any main updates. It's pretty cool. Um, thank you, by the way, for the um, for saying the stream's awesome and uh, hello from America. We're getting pretty late for you. But you can also begin instantly see that our stack limits have applied. Previously they were 8, but now they are 10. And that's really it. That's all that you have to do for stack limits. Um, but it is worth um, going over uh, just because it is weird that they're in like the inventory folder. However, as you can see, it's very, very simple. We're going to keep that there. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy over all of our items for the moment and run the localization so that we are, we do have kind of a, um, we do have a baseline mod set up for this. So next up on the list, uh, which I do have to pull up because I'm terribly forgetful. Uh, ah, we are going over loot. So we're going to do an overview of the loot and then we're going to add the loot table for our bone trinkets that we created last stream, which, of course, uh, you can come in and see here. We created these. They are all good. If we load up our town again with all of our mod changes in, you'll see in our trinket inventory, you can see all of our bone trinkets that we have implemented. The problem is we haven't told the game where to actually put these. We can load it up and we can force ourselves to have, all, to have all the trinkets, that's fine, but a normal player is never going to come by them because nothing actually gives it to them. As far as the system thinks, you know, they're just kind of a secret a secret uh, trinket set. But we don't want that. We want them to drop from something that we create even further on in the streams. And for that, we're going to need loot tables. So immediately if we come in here, we can see four loot tables, only one of which is really going to be relevant to us, and that is the loot.javascript file. If we open this up, we have all of the loot tables that you can find within the game. 
And these are pretty simple to figure out, but obviously the file's length can be a bit daunting at first. But all you need to know is that a single loot table is confined right within that much code. It's not very much, um, and it's very easy to quickly append things to a loot table to adjust the chances for things. Um, but we're just going to go over this loot table B here for a sec. So obviously we have an ID, much like our quirks or our trinkets or anything else that we've had to use IDs for, this is simply what is going to be called when the game is going to look for a loot table. We come back to our original game, and you don't have to do this, you can simply follow along. If we open up something like the Brigand Cutthroat, you can see that his loot, when he dies, is going to drop a single count of loot code C. If we come over here, we can see that there's a loot table called C, which is gold. There are actually multiple of C, which brings me on to the next um, data entry, the difficulty. Now difficulty in Darkest Dungeon, there were originally going to be five difficulties. But early on in development, they cut it down to three. However, the code kind of stayed in place for the other two in a way. So the difficulties are actually one is apprentice, three is veteran, and five is champion. Six is um, for uh, like the Darkest Dungeon or Wolf Quest difficulty. So if a Brigand Cutthroat A which um, I will say right now is for the Apprentice version compared to B, which is for Vet, and C, which is for Champ. So this is the Apprentice version of the Brigand Cutthroat, and it's going to drop a single count of Loot Table C. And Dungeon is not filled out here, it is blank which means that it applies to all dungeons. You can apply a loot table to a certain dungeon. So if, for instance, if you wanted vastly more loot to drop in the ruins compared to all the other areas, you could create multiple loot tables and specify that in dungeon. Uh, it's called crypts actually in the file. So you have to type crypts, not ruins that you could start adjusting it and that this table, even though it's Apprentice and uh, IDC, that it would drop vastly more just within the crypts. But for now, you can see that it's going to drop a single set. But it, how do we know which one of these it chooses? Because we can see that it has gold and it has different amounts set for the gold but it works off of these chances. Now the chance for one of these to drop is simply the chance of a single item divided by the sum of all of the chances in that value set. So if we open up one of these and we just do three plus three plus six, you can see that the total sum is 22. And if we do 3 over 22, there's a 13.6% chance that an Apprentice Cutthroat is going to drop 25 gold. And you can do that same formula for each and every one of these um, entries in every single table. However, you can also tell a loot table to... Uh, <laughs> so don't use the numpad. I know, I use the numpad, okay? Look, I do data work. Can I switch these to something else? What are my F keys used for? Of course. God damn it. Uh, let's put this. Let's do F3. Okay, F1. It's not switching it behind. Alright, All right, problem solved. Should have known that would happen. Note to self, don't use num keys. 
when you have num keys set to your uh, sw scene switches. Please, Jesus. All right, we're good. We're gonna do. Wh wh what did you guys miss? Wh what What did you guys miss? Because I think I. Oh, it was when I was doing the calculations. Let me do the calculations again then, with the proper. Um, okay. All right. So we did the sum of all the chances in a value set, and we found that the sum was twenty-two. I mean, that's just very simple math there. However, to find the chance of a single one to appear, it is the chance of a single entry over the sum of all of them. So three, of course, for this first gold value of 25 divided by 22. 13.6% chance that a apprentice brigand cutthroat is going to drop 25 gold when it dies. Very simple stuff. But I did want to come up here and say, uh, but before you guys told me that I was being stupid and set my scene switches to numkeys, um, you can actually add tables to a table. Tables within a table. Um, which gets pretty, um, you know, it can get pretty complex to keep track of all of that. But it's not too bad if you're just working with a couple very basic trinket or uh, loot tables. So as we can see, uh, anything that calls B, which I believe is a um, a curio table actually, is going to choose between C for gold and G for gem. I know it can get a little confusing with that. Um, and this is obviously very simple math. There's a 75% chance that a curio call for the table B will give you gold and a 25% chance that it will give you a gem, which gems are down here. Would loot tables inside of loot tables be like the madman trinkets? Yes. Um, let me go down to Matt, the admin, actually. Um, uh, madman. Uh, so here we go. We have Madman here, and the Madman drops a single drop of this. And you can see that we have a 5 over 6 percent chance, uh, or 5 over 6 chance to drop Loot Table S, which is for um, supplies, and one for T Madman. These are different tables. So we come up, we can actually, um, you know, I know where S is. Let me get up here. I missed it. I think I missed it. Is it down? Did they move these? Oh, I think they moved this with a. They moved this temporarily with one of the newer updates. Um, I don't know why, uh, but it's in here. If you're looking for S and A, these are very, very widely used tables. Um, so we have S here with um, no chance to drop firewood. Of course, if you want to allow firewood to drop, you could always just set that to whatever number you want. Um, but it drops provisions and supplies in varying um, amounts. And then he also calls the T underscore madman set, which of course, as you can see here, there are four total chances. So there's a 25% chance that the madman will drop a very common trinket, um, 25 for common and 25 for uncommon, and then another 25% chance for the madman trinket rarity. And this is actually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a simple table with a trinket type rarity of bone, because if you remember, that's what we set the rarity of our bone trinkets to be. Um, but we are actually going to create our own loot table. I'm going to, going to, I don't know what changed. Did we change anything here? We did not. I'm going to revert that, not delete. That was the wrong one. I'm going to copy this and we're just going to paste the folder in there easier than making the folder and copying it copy the file 
So a collector is just one layer of loot table, right? Or are their head are the heads considered a child loot table? The collector in vanilla, I believe, because he has a chance to drop. Actually, I think the collector is the collector is going to have his own um, loot table, I believe. Is that right? No, that's for the the secret stash. The collector might just drop regular loot. Good question. I have not checked the collector's loot tables in vanilla for a long time. But it's very easy to see. Um, okay, so yeah, collector can drop a head. Um, I remember that now. So simply put, he has a 75% chance to drop a trapezohedron. As you can see, trapezohedron, amount one and a 25% chance to actually drop one of his um, one of his head trinkets. Now when the all of the trinkets are actually um, collected from his table here, which of course in vanilla there are only three, this um, this table down here kind of it won't be called anymore because there's no data to call and so you'll never actually have a collector die after collecting all of his trinkets and you won't be awarded anything you simply won't be given a uh, you won't be given a head anymore so you'll just be given a trapezohedron so th th this table kind of can get used up and then it will default back onto just trapezohedron. So you'll always get a trapezohedron once you have collected all the heads. And we're going to be using that actually a little bit for our own uses. Uh, so what I want to do is get rid of these. I'm actually going to come in and check just how the DLC handled its loot table. Because personally, I override the loot table, but I don't want to do that here. Um, okay, so it's just same setup. Every other one. Our underscore mod dot loot dot JSON. All right, awesome. Yeah, no problem. That's what we're here for. We're going to get rid of all these. Just for the time being, we don't want to have all of these appear. We only want one, and I'm just going to keep this one because we're going to be modifying it. So I'm going to get rid of all the entries for tables, and we're going to call this um, T Skeleton. Following a very similar format to the vanilla game, um, T underscore um, anything means trinket, and then kind of what we want it to apply for. And difficulty zero means that it applies for all difficulties. Um, we don't have any dungeon sets, so it's going to apply to all dungeons. And for the actual, um, trinkets we want, let's open up the vanilla loot. And let's just go down to some of the trinkets here, so I can quickly copy a rarity. And make sure to put commas on all except the last entry, of course. And we're going to set this to bone because that is our rarity name, if you remember correctly. And I open the correct file. Um, you can see our ID of bone here. So we've, we actually have created a, um, a loot table. Now if we give T skeleton to any of the enemies, they'll simply drop one of our trinkets. That's, that's very easy. However, I, I don't just want them to drop our trinket. I want them to default back onto a normal trinket should all of our trinkets be exhausted. And we can do that pretty simply. Let's come back over here and let's scroll up to the top. And we're going to copy one of these. And paste it in. And if you remember correctly, T is the generic trinket table. We scroll down to the T's here. You can see the generic trinket tables right here, all four of them. 
So now if we set this high enough to something like 1 million, then we set this to 1, effectively, and of course this could, you know, somebody could get so extremely unlucky, it's statistically ridiculous, um, but realistically somebody should get all five of the bone trinkets, and then when all the bone trinkets are exhausted, the skeletons that we're going to be creating will drop the normal trinkets. And that way we won't ever have a problem where you summon these skeletons and they're not worth anything. So they'll, they'll always have something to drop now. And that's a good way to keep, um, keep from ending up with like situations where, um, you know, you set this really cool exclusive table for this really cool exclusive thing that you have in your mod, but after the user or player has, um, kind of expended the loot table, there's nothing really, there's no reason to do it anymore. This number is not the percent chance, this number is the chance in a single entry set, right here in a single entry, divided by the sum of all entries in there. So again, if we pull up our um, thing here, we do, I believe this is actually equals, yeah, this actually equals 100 right here. And the chance, of course, over 100, 45 over 100 is 45% chance. But it, it won't always equal 100, so like, for instance, here, Trinket Madman, it's one over the sum of all of them in the table. So there's a 25% chance for each of these outcomes. Here, it's 50%. And for something like Shovel Only, which is used in the tutorial, um, th that simply will always drop Shovel. You know, there, there's nothing else it can be. I do have a... Um, Let me open it up. Uh, where is it? It is. Ah, here we go. So I actually have a um a loot table that I've used for Pitch Black Dungeon, which is a giant spreadsheet that I use to control chances of all of PBD's loot tables. Um, it's very, wow, I did not remember that it was this long. Which part of the tutorial is this, and what did I miss from the last sessions? Um, this is the third stream out of ten. Let me open that up for you really quickly, and then we'll resume our, what we're working on. We are on the third day here, inventory, loot, and creating potions, and there are ten total streams. Uh, if you type in exclamation point schedule, you can see all of the um, you can see this as it is, and if you type in exclamation point YouTube, you should be able to get my YouTube channel where all the old streams are stored. Matt Hatter asks, so percentage chance is made by total over X number, right? Um, other way around, it's um, X number over total. So if you take a look at PBD's spreadsheet, which is publicly available now, um, you can see for things like uh, the gold table that we went over, I have implemented, and you can see the chances, and then the percentage. It shows the percentage right here. So if we were to type in something like 10, it would change the percentage um, and show the proper one. And this is just a quick visual way for me to balance loot tables so that you know I'm not eyeballing it and saying, OK, maybe this looks good. And that happens a lot with like um, individual, I have individual enemy loot tables in PBD. And you can see here, like for an ectoplasm, it's going to drop the CeeLo or G loot tables with a 14 chance for this and a one chance for this. And then it gives me the actual percentages. And that matters very, um, that matters a lot for like giant um, ones like potions for blood letters just so I can see what is going to actually drop at what rate. And again, if you actually want to use that loot table, which you are free to do so now that I have released all of my um, personal modding documents, 
you can come into our Discord and actually I don't think I have a command up. But I can get you a command for that. So we've gone over loot tables. We have already now implemented our loot table. It's ready to go. It's ready to use when we uh, want to use it. Um, but I want to commit these changes that we've made already just so that we don't lose them before we actually move on to potions. So I want to I want to actually add these individually because they are two separate kind of items. We have first our inventory stack limits that we changed and the loot that we changed, but they're they're two different subjects. So I want to right click here and press SVN commit. And I want to only select inventory. I'm going to set change stack limits. Now, I actually kind of forget what we changed. So let's come in here. And I want to open that and we can instantly open that and we can see, oh, yes, that's right. We changed changed quest item stack limits. Two, three. And we changed firewood stack limit to five. I believe we also changed one other one. We changed firewood to five and we changed torches to 10. That's right. To 10, very good. And we will commit that, perfect. And again, if we right click and we select the log, we can see exactly what changed. We can even copy the, um, we can copy all the revisions, the messages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, you know, we have so much information at our fingertips simply because we are using this SVN system. And now we can simply commit all the rest of it added bone trinket loot table and there we go we're all up to date as our svn will tell us and if we wanted to we could copy our inventory and loot folders over simply so that we are ready to go when we um want to actually commit or when we actually want to add the loot tables and now we're going to move on to potions now, I did remind you guys at the beginning of the stream, but I know some of you are new, that we are on stream of three, and I have added these three art backgrounds to the, um, to the assets. So if you type um, exclamation point links in chat, you will get the document that has the, um, the RAR file with these images in it. If you want to use these or if you want to use your own, it does not matter. Um, but I have provided you with these so that we can use them and you can follow along if desired. I'm going to give you guys a second to do that if you'd like while I take a drink because you probably sound I'm dying. Much better. A little off topic general, are most files in DD using and includes together information from one another? I'm not too familiar with JS, most of my experience in HTML and CSS. Um, do you mean like, will it append additional data or will it overwrite? And that is um, entirely up to file name. So as of Crimson Court and mod support, most sections in well, most mechanics, I would say, in the files are going to um, add, but only if you've named them like we've been naming them in our mod. So you see, like, our colors is rmod.colors. Inventory is, um, actually, we should be making these. Um, no, these can overwrite. That's fine. Those need to overwrite. But rmod.loot, uh, you know, for buffs, rmod.buffs. If you were just to name them like we did actually for our uh, inventory, these are going to overwrite the vanilla stack limits. These will not append them. They will, these will not be compatible with other inventory mods. 
um, because um, even for something like my miscellaneous mods here, stacking inventory, these all use the vanilla file names. Um, Maybe a bit too early to ask, but is it possible to make fully functioning total conversions for Darkest Dungeon with unique mechanics that aren't present in the base game? Um, no. Now I know what Mad Hatter means, like crafting as in using items and obtaining other items, but that is actually just a mechanic that is used within the game, simply using a supply on a curio and obtaining another supply. It just does so in a system that kind of is reminiscent of crafting. But you can't like add new mechanics. I know a lot of people want to add like new damage over time um, effects, like fire. You can't you can't do that with the current system, um, which is unfortunate. But you can do kind of hacky, cheaty, dirty things to the current system, like Matt Hatter says with PVD using um, kind of having its own like crafting system with caustic solutions and and um, whatnot. We're we're gonna get to curios later, um, which I believe is like stream five or six. So now that you have the modding uh, assets for this stream, we need to come in and we actually need to see. We we, we need to think of what these are. These are supplies. We want one of these to be purchasable. We want one of these to drop from skeleton courtiers, um, and one of these to drop from brigand. Blood letters. So we know that there are things that you can already purchase within the store. We already went over that. We went into campaign, provision, provisions.json. And you can see down here there are already things that can be bought. And they mostly look like supplies. Well, these are actually stored in a very similar area. We come back out here, we go to Panels, Icons Equip, and we come to Supply. You can see that all the supplies you can purchase or find in-game, and that are considered supplies, of course, are named very similar to our trinkets. If you remember our trinkets are named Inventory underscore Trinket. And then the addition sign and the name of it. And these are inventory supply and the name of it. So these are actually going to be very similar to the edit and add as our trinkets, but with a twist. So first off, let's come back to our icons equip and let's create a new folder type supply because of course these have to go in the same area. Let's copy and paste these in or you can um, put them in. Now let's drag them up into supply and let's name these and let's make sure to do all lowercase of course because that's um, the best way for the uh, game to read them inventory supply let's call this berserking underscore brew let's do the same for each one I'm going to copy this for the next one let's call this health underscore potion and this will be stress underscore potion now this berserking brew when used is going to um, give the character 20% additional damage but minus 10 accuracy this health potion is going to restore 20% of the character's HP and the stress potion is going to relieve 15% or uh, 15 points of the user's stress. So now that we have these in game, we could actually, these are all ready to go. We have all the art that we need for these, but we need strings too. We actually need quite a few things. But we're going to do strings first because we know that much like our trinkets, we're going to need these. So we're going to open up our strings again, and we're going to type right here. We're going to do new potions. 
and then create another comment underneath. Just as our spacer. We're going to save that for now. Let's come back to the vanilla files. Go to our um, strings. And open up the miscellaneous string file again. And I'm simply going to type in supply here and see if we can come up with. Ah, perfect. We're already here. So we have descriptions for supplies and we have titles for supplies. So I'm going to copy the one for anti venom. Doesn't matter which one you copy, of course. Just copy one of them so that we know what we're looking for. I'm going to copy the description for anti venom. And let's get rid of anti venom. So that we have completely blank supply localization files. Now, if you remember, we have three potions, so let's copy this and paste it two additional times. Now, if we come back to our panels, just so we don't forget the names, and I'm going to drag this off to the side, but of course, you can keep it on your same screen. We want to put in the IDs of the potions we've now created. Berserking underscore brew. And I'm going to copy and paste this again for right here. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to do that for health potion. Remember, keep the same case. If not, it will cause problems. Health potion. And then stress underscore potion. And now we're going to call this in game as Zerking Brew. And remember, for this, this is what the user is actually going to see. So we can keep, we can make this um, capitalized. We're going to call this Health Potion. And we're going to call this the Remedy of Resolve, which the one we're going to create is a little bit simpler than the one in PBD, but it's going to do one of this uh, one similar effect. And for Berserking Brew, let's call this increases the hero's damage but lowers accuracy. Restores 20% of the hero's HP. I hesitated before 20% just because the percent sign is used in other um, instances and it might actually not appear in the strings we'll see um you know that that just might be something we have to change we can simply do you know one fifth um and this one is going to restore 15 stress points to the hero our shields you relieves 15 stress on the hero it leaves um, in stress the hero. Perfect. To drag this back over and minimize it. And now for this, let's copy. Remember, we want to paste this for uh, all languages, even if we cannot translate, because this way people can play in the language of their choosing and not have to worry about having missing strings. And actually, they just added new, um, new languages. They just added, uh, I believe, Korean and Chinese. And I, I want to get those implemented. These were not, of course, planned for, but we will get them. So let's see. What's a simple one we can do? Probably the workshop string file. We can see the two Chinese and a Korean. So I'm going to copy these over. Delete what's in them. And then simply copy and paste our strings for these other languages. Perfect. So we now have the strings for our new potions, but we need to create the effects. Uh, hello, Fat Ash82. Do you work for Red Hook Studios? No, I'm an independent contractor. I have done work for Red Hook Studios, but I do not work 
at Rifle Studios. Alright, so let's create the effects for these. Now a good way to figure out what the effects for these need to look like. Simply know that the effects for these potions are going to look for the ID and the effect that's linked to that ID in the effects file. Now we have not actually gotten into effects, but this is going to be a very good way to kind of start to look over the file. And we're going to be utilizing it a lot more in the future, especially with um, new enemies and affixes. But for now, we're just going to be looking for a very simple one. We're going to be looking for holy underscore water. And right here we have the dog treats, holy water, and laudanum effects. So we need to copy this for all languages, right? Um, you don't need to. However, if somebody uses a language apart from English and um, wants to use your mod, they won't see the strings unless you have created the strings for them. So we can copy in the English ones and even if they don't understand English, they at least won't have broken strings. Hopefully they understand a little bit to, you know, read a few words. Um, but this is simply to avoid missing strings, which won't cause the game to crash, but it, um, it will look very terrible. Um, so tell me you worked on some stuff to bring Dark Ascension to Nintendo Switch. Uh, I do not know that at all. Like I said, I'm an independent contractor. I can't speak for Red Hook. I don't work at Red Hook. Um, You'll have to ask them directly. Uh, okay, so we'll just be blank text boxes, for example, that would explain some mods I've used. Yes, if you see bright blue text on a string and it looks kind of like the strings that we've been writing, you know, it's like str underscore blah, blah, blah. That means that there is a missing string and you would have to report that to the mod creator. So we see here that the effect for holy water, we see it's named exactly after the ID and it must be. For potions, or for supplies, I should say, it needs to be named exactly like the ID. Um, otherwise, it simply won't have an effect. And it targets the performer, which in this case is the um, hero that's using it. It is an item, and this means that you cannot use this item on the same hero over and over. Cruiser Dota, I believe they'll be making the game for mobile devices before they consider other consoles. Besides, maybe the Xbox One. I believe Tyler has said, or John, somebody said publicly that I think they were looking at tablets recently. Um, and I can see that has, this has a duration of three. However, this um, this only matters for the buffs or the uh, you know what it does. So you can see dog treats, of course, apply to the Houndmaster only for attack. Rating add, which you know from our work on the trinkets, is um, attack rating and combat stat add 15% accuracy. And then combat stat multiply, which you can see here, combat stat multiply, damage low and damage high, 50%. So what we're going to be doing, actually, is we're going to come in here and we're just going to copy the um, actually, we can just create a completely new file for our mod. Do I have the mod open at the moment? I do. All right, so we're going to come over here and we're going to create a effects file. And in the effects, we're going to create a new file. Now, if you do not have extensions shown, um, I believe you can change those in the view section. I don't have it here, but if you're not using a crazy Windows theme like I am, um, you will have the view section and you can turn on file extensions. That way you can change it to dot darkest. And we're changing this to our underscore mods, just like everything else, dot effects, dot darkest. And yes, we want to change it. That's okay, but it just needs to mirror the exact same setup as the vanilla game's effects. We're going to open that up and we're actually going to copy the Holy water and dog treats for now, just as, a, as an example for us to use. We're going to put a comment in here. Remember, this is JavaScript comment, so you can do two forward slashes. And we're going to do new potions. Perfect. 
So we're all ready to go here to implement our new potions. First one you want to do is for stress healing. And if you remember correctly, that is, I'm actually going to open up the one here. This one is for the stress potion. So remember, we need to name it exactly like the ID, which is stress underscore potion. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to copy the beginning of this effect and call it stress underscore potion. And it's not going to have a duration, of course, um, because it doesn't have any buffs. It's just going to cure stress, which is not a buff. We're going to give it a chance of 100, just because that's the base chance, and not a chance of 10. When we come over to the base effects here, we need to find what stress healing actually is. So I'm going to look for stress, and immediately it's going to find this first one here, but this is causing stress. And it's not stress minus five for stress heal. It's actually a completely different effect. So let's keep looking. Um, a lot of stress, no stress heals. Ah, here we go, heals stress. We're gonna copy this bit, put it here. And remember we want to heal 15 stress with this potion. And that actually is it. However, there are a couple additional things that you can apply um, that are just good to have uh, on hand. And that's these. I would put these on always just because there's very few instances where you would not want these. Um, and this means that should it hit, it will apply the effect. Should it miss, it will apply the effect. And whether it's going to QE the effect or not. And we want to do all of these. Because we, we always want it to apply when you right click. Um, and we want it to wait for other stress to apply before actually applying it. And this, this way you can't like quickly use it to keep yourself from like afflicting or something. So we have that one in place. Now we need to add another effect for Berserking Brew. And instead of actually creating the buffs like this, I want to create the buff IDs like we've been doing for our trinkets. I'm going to copy this. For potion, wouldn't it be assumed true anyway by the game? Yes. Yes, it should. It's redundant, but it's safe. Um, and this one is called Berserking underscore brew. And now we need buff IDs because we haven't created the buffs for this. So let's come back out of our mod here and let's go into shared buffs and our mod buffs. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see we have our trinkets and our work buffs, but now we're gonna create, be creating potion buffs. And this berserking brew is going to do plus 20% damage and minus 10 accuracy for three rounds. So I just wanna make sure that we have a duration of three. Good, we do. And now we need to find some um, damage buffs, which we should have some up here. Perfect, we do. Do note though that these are for unholy and we're going to want these to be for everything. So make sure that your commas are there. And we're going to call these Potion Zerking Brew. I'm going to use the ID and this way I can quickly search for a um, a buff ID without actually having to know what I'm looking for because I can simply look it up based on the potion ID. Underscore DMG L. Remember, this is going to be for damage low. Underscore buff one. And we want these to always be active like our quirks. And get rid of the string. And I'm going to copy and paste this below, but change this to DMGH. And now let's set these to 20%. And let's just go over them. Berserking Brew, Damage. These look perfect. I'm going to copy one of these over. Copy it again, but remember all we do is change the H. Hello, x -team. welcome. And now we want one other buff, and that's going to be minus 10 
accuracy. I never knew you were into tea. I love tea. I am into tea oh, greatly. Tons and tons of it. Here we go. We have an accuracy right up here. So let's copy this. Paste this below. And let's call this potion. Remember, this is for Berserking Brew as well. Underscore ACC for accuracy. D1, because this is a debuff. Have a modded your DD and H as well. Maybe you should get back into it. Remember, this is a debuff, so we want to do minus 10 accuracy. Let's copy this over. And now, and of course, you can place these in quotes too if you'd like a kind of an easier way to see your um, your buffs. This will not harm the system at all. Um, it's, this is an easy way to see, you know, where your buffs are actually in uh, in effect. And for these, I also want to apply these. Now we need one more. Give me a second to take a drink, though. Our healing potion. Now this is actually going to use a new effect that was added with Crimson Court, where you can heal a percentage of the hero's HP instead of a healing a static amount. So for this, we're actually going to need to come into the Crimson Court. Where is Crimson Court? Uh, where's our vanilla game? We're going to look for DLC, Crimson Court, and in Features, Flagellant, actually, is where I'm going to come into. Effects, and we're going to open up the effects for the Flagellant. Hasn't that always been the case with specific camping skills? Um, um, can you repeat that? For specifically what I was talking about, while we find this? Um, now, if you don't know about the Flagellant, the Flagellant can heal a percentage of HP using this effect heal dot heal underscore percent and then the percentage in float value. Remember this is a float value. So a value of one in this case would restore one hundred percent, but a value of zero point three five is thirty five percent. Let's come over to our effects and copy this here. Place it below. Healing camp skills like triage and experimental vapor seal for percentage. Yes, but camping skills work differently. And um, I'm going to get into that in a bit. Uh, I think that's stream five. For now, uh, put those out of your mind because those do work in a very different way. And remember, this is health underscore potion. And we want this to heal 20% of the user's HP. And I'm going to put 0 0.20. You don't need the zero. I'm just going to do it for consistency. And we have our effects now. And if we were to um, use these in game, we would see the proper effects show up because we've named them correctly. These look correct. Um, all of these buffs are defined. However, we still need some more things. And let me get this as a question. So for things like the dot heals and heal for percentage are something we can only use because it was added with CC DLC, right? Yes. You cannot create new mechanics in Darkest Dungeon. You can only use existing ones. So I couldn't be like uh, heal, you know, stress underscore percent. And, um, you know, that wouldn't work because that has not been defined in the core code. Remember when we went over in the start of this, we went over the stack limits and the sale limits. Well, we actually need those. We actually need to be able to tell the game that we have a new supply item because we've added the effects, we've added the art, but the game doesn't actually know to look for it. It, it doesn't know that new supplies exist just because art exists. 
So we need to come in here and we need to go to base um, supply. And this is where all of these supplies are stored, if you remember. Now we want to do that, but we want to do that with our new items. So let's copy this. And we want to, we want to name it to our underscore mod supply items. And in here we can get rid of all of except for laudanum, just because I want to use that as a copy. And copy that three times. And we want to set these IDs to our new potions. Okay, so if I have to repeat myself, I'm just having trouble distinguishing between what is hard coded and what isn't. Um, yes. If it's in the effects, you know, if it's like, if it's already in the game, you can use it. If it's not already in the game, chances are it's, it's not available to use. So I'm come back here and we're just going to copy these three IDs because remember this is consistency between our, um, our new potions. It, every time we use the ID, we need to actually consistently use it for stack limits and purchase values, etc., etc. Now only one of these is going to be purchasable, the health potion. So not the stress potion or berserking brew. So we can set these to zero. For stack limits, we can set these to whatever we want. Um, I'm going to keep these each at three because we don't want somebody carrying around, you know, massive amounts of stress healing or regular healing with no consequence. I like these to line up, by the way. That's just kind of a thing that I like to do. Um, sell gold value. Uh, I'm going to set this to zero for now, too. Sell gold value, we can set these to... The health potion can be bought. So this is important. The health potion can be bought. If we set the sell gold value to more or equal the purchase value, somebody can simply buy these. Uh, sorry about that. And sell them for either the equal amount or more. We, we don't want that. So we're not going to give these a sell gold value. These, however, are only going to be found from killing enemies. So we can set these to maybe 250 each. Because they're quite valuable on their own. And the purchase value for the health potions we want to be... Let's set these to 150. Well, they're 20% healing potions, so maybe let's set them to 350. Which is about in line with other supplies you see over here. They're a little bit more expensive than like shovels and whatever, but um, for a 20% heal, that's not bad. So these all look good. Purchase, they can be purchased, but they can be sold. This can be purchased, but not sold. Uh, that looks good. So we're going to come back to our, um, our files here. And we don't have the actual purchase items. So we want to copy this provision item here. But we actually need to set it up. I don't want to copy over the whole campaign folder at the moment, just provisions. And that's very important to have. So for raid starting length inventory, we aren't actually going to have these be given. These aren't going to be like firewood. They're not going to be given, um, you know, automatically when you start a quest, they're going to be purchased. So we're going to come down to default store inventory item list. And remember, this is for um, short, medium, long, exhausting, and then the new um, length, which is actually looks like a copy of long, but for um, the new Crimson Court. So let's come in here and let's add three lines. Uh, sorry, one line, not three. One, two, three. And let's set these to zero and blank for now. Let's copy it in for each one. So remember, our only one that's going to be purchasable is health potion. So let's copy the ID for this. 
and put this in the ID for the supply because it is, remember, a supply. And now we have health potions in the store, but we, we aren't actually selling any. We set this to zero. So for short, let's give one available, two for medium, three for long. Remember, this is exhausting, but I don't actually want four available. I'd rather just still have three. And this is a copy of long, so let's have three. So one, two, three, three, three. And when we're in the store, which we should actually be able to, there's still two things we need to do, but for now, um, they aren't going to affect whether or not these actually show up in the game. So I'm just going to copy over everything, run the localization again, remember, because we did add new strings. And if we start up the town, we should, if I've done everything correctly. We should see our new health potion in here. There we go. Health potion restores 20% of the hero's HP, and you, if you see, it calls the purchase price. If I add some gold, which I apologize, I cannot share those. Those are dev commands. You can see that we can purchase them, and they have the stack limit of three. Of course, we only have two available. That's perfect. We should even be able to have some purchasable for this quest as well. Yes, we have one, because it's a short. And this was a medium. So there were two. So that's pretty cool. We have those working, but we don't actually have them working to the point where we can use them in-game. I know, I do apologize that I can't share those. However, uh, if you're loading up an existing save, you should see them immediately, and you should probably have some gold lying around that you can um, use. So we need two things for these to work. Um, we need loot, drop tables, and effects. And this is where things get weird because when you use like an item in game like bandages or antivenom, you know that there's little effects that appear on your character when you use them. Now, unfortunately, if those don't exist, they'll crash the game if you try to use a potion that doesn't have effects. But I know that creating effects can be difficult. Well, there's a solution that I've used for this because I'm not an artist. Let's create the effects folder. And it's just simply FX. We're going to come in here and we're going to be looking for cure target. Now, if we open up the PNG for this, you can see that it's very simply this, these light blue little uh, particles and glow that appears. And I'm just going to be copying that because that's, that's about all it needs. Doesn't have to be fancy. If you want to create your own effects, um, I, I'm sorry that I can't give you inf info on how to do that. Uh, just because I'm not an artist, I've never used the animating tools. Now let's come back in here for a second and we can see dog treats. Now we can see the dog treats not only have the folder named after the ID, but it's each is named after. And if we open up the Atlas file, we can even see this is changed. That's very important. Because if you miss any of these, um, it will there will be problems. So in Cure Target, let's name this for right now. Let's name this to um, Stress Potion, and I'm going to copy that. We want to name all of these after Stress Potion because we're going to be tricking the effects basically into thinking that this is the effects for the Stress Potion. And remember, even in here, you need to change this cure target to stress potion. And we're going to be doing this for each of our new potions. Health underscore potion. And the way we're going to test these is actually something that you can do on your own. Um, we won't have to use any special commands for it. Zerking brew. So 
but remember that when we do test these, we will need to revert some code afterwards after we test them. And that's just to make sure that um, we don't eventually upload a version of our mod that kind of uh, gives these automatically. So now that we have those in place, let's copy over the effects to the vanilla game. You should see our new effects or um, effects in here. Now we're going to come to campaign provision and provision in here. But remember, do not do this in our mod because this is going to be the one that we upload. So this is our copy that the users are going to be able to have access to. So we don't want to edit that at the moment. We want to edit the one that we're going to be overriding. And this is just for us to test. So in this first not that my cause and auto pops just happen again. I know. It might be OBS. It might just be a bad version. I'm not sure what it is. It's okay, though. So in this first... Um, I don't know what it is, then. Don't worry about it. If I have to reinstall some drivers, that's fine. But for now, um, for the raid starting length... This is what, I remember when we went over, we said, when you start a game, when you start a, um, when you start a, a dungeon, so for this is the medium, it's automatically going to give you a free firewood. And we want to do that for right now, but for our potions. Uh, this is a Samson Meteor, this is a studio mic. So we want to come in here, and there, there's a special script that can be run that you all have access to. And it's in here, in Windows No Steam. Remember, we don't want to run the Steam version. We want to run the No Steam version. This is incredibly important, because if you open up the... Um, if you open up the Windows one and run any of the EXEs in here, it's actually going to use your Steam version of the game. Now, GOG users do not have to worry about this, but if you're using Steam at all, you need to run the no Steam version because this prefers these files over the ones that Steam has in the base Darkest Dungeon directory, which is here. This is my pristine um, Darkest Dungeon copy. So in Create Monster, this is actually a special script that can be double clicked on um on uh on windows i believe and hopefully mac and linux but if you double click on this it's going to give you a prompt to type in a an enemy well now what enemies do we want well for right now we simply want to call a regular skeleton rabble which is down here skeleton common Remember, we want skeleton common A. That's just going to be the basic one. So skeleton common A. And press OK. And it's going to load up Darkest Dungeon in a battle with the enemy you've created. Or the enemy that you've called. And give it a second, because it is loading up a dungeon as we speak. And there we go. And now we are in a fight with a skeleton rabble with a default party. And we don't care about the, what the party is at the moment. We simply want to use this because this calls the inventory. So we can set some items to appear in a short dungeon. And they'll appear in our inventory when we use that script. So let's copy this three times. Let's put stress underscore potion one health underscore potion one and berserking brew one. And now when we load up this here it's now going to load us back up in a fight again, but this time with the three potions we just created. Hey, 
And there you go. Now potions are available to use in the middle of a combat. And it looks like we have all of our correct strings appearing. And we can even go ahead and use one of these. And we saw the effects appear. Minus 10 accuracy, plus 20% damage. Very easy. And he even has 20 stress, so if we use this, it's just relief 15 stress. Now health is going to be a different one because we can use this, but you won't, we, we can't actually check if it does heal health. It should technically show up a number 6, which is of course 20% about of 26. Um, but I just for fun, I kind of actually want to see it heal some health. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this to the champ version of Skeleton Rabble and I'm going to set two of them. And that way we can let them hit us for a couple rounds and uh, take some of the health off of our heroes. The annoying pop-ups of course for tutorial but we're just going to pass our turns and allow these Rabble to hit us. All right, hopefully they do about six damage to our A-bomb here. Perfect. And even some more. Beautiful. So now when it's our A-bomb's turn again, we can use the health potion and heal 20% of his health. And this is better in many ways than a single static heal amount because it scales to the hero's HP. But again, these all work very much if we wanted to transform him and give him this Brew of Berserking. This is immediately applied to his damage. As you can see there. You can see even on his accuracy mod, minus 10 from an item, plus 20% from an item. It is based on the total H pool of the hero, yes. Anything you can modify during testing to get the results you want? Want enemies to attack whether or not they crit? Uh, no. There are some dev commands for those, but um, of course I can't share them. The one I have been allowed to share is the command um, dash no restore. And what this is, it loads up the dev Hamlet like I have been doing um, to quickly load up a, an area for testing. And you can use this with the command line. Remember the dash is important and you want to put spaces. So personally, I would recommend running with um, size 1366, 768, space, dash, no restore. And this will run the game in windowed mode 1366 by 768, which is of course two thirds of a 1080p monitor. And then no restore will load up to the Hamlet. That is the one I've been authorized to share at the moment. Now we need to do one more thing actually with these. And I know there are a lot of changes, that, uh, a lot of things you have to do with potions to actually make them working. Um, the one thing we need to do at the moment is add a loot table. Because these are going to be dropped by enemies. Two of them are. These, um, the stress healing potion is going to drop from courtiers, skeleton courtiers. And the Berserking Brew is going to drop from Blood Letters. And this ties in again to the... Uh, where is the schedule? We are going to be creating a map. And this map is actually going to be taking place in the ruins, the crypts. And um, so we're actually going to be able to see these potions drop as we play through that dungeon. Again, almost everything that we're doing here is going to tie into this new map that we create. Uh, the new trinkets, the new quirks, maybe um, the new potions definitely, all the affixes, the lore, all these are going to be kind of combining into this new map. But for right now I want to set up the loot tables for when we're ready. And this is going to require um, us to do a couple things. So for instance, let's come in here. Let's not, well we can copy this. So we're going to copy this. Remember to place a comma and we're to put potion underscore or tier. And let's just get rid of the entries for now. 
And then we're going to copy this again. We're going to put potion blood letter. And I want to open up the vanilla loot again, just so we can see what the supplies look like. These are actually, we can find these in the overrides. We can see that the supplies are here with the IDs. These are fairly um, easy to figure out, of course, just because it's an item, the chance, what type it is, and then the amount. It's all separated via um, by icon lines. So we're going to change these IDs to stress potion and then copy it again and place it underneath for zerking brew. And that's all we have to do. And now when we're ready to edit these um, enemies, which we'll get to editing enemies later, we will be giving them these loot tables so that when they die, they'll drop one of these potions. So that's uh, very simple. Now, I know that there are a lot of um, a lot of things to modify for potions. Uh, it's kind of crazy just how much you actually need to add for potions. If we come in here and let's commit these because we know that these are not working. Added stress potion, healing potion, and brew of berserking. And remember, we're going to select all because we want all of these changes to be um, and additions to be committed. You can see there are a lot of changes actually just to get three potions working. But we're all set. Are there any questions on that? For um, inventory, for stack limits, store prices, the loot tables. Are there any questions now? If you forget about questions, don't worry, because stream number eight is our Q&A stream. There's some things that I can show again or reiterate. No questions? All right. Well, uh, if you think of any, just spit them out. I'm going to go over um, the next stream schedule, which takes place on Monday. Monday the uh, 17th. Uh, how long do these streams usually last? Unknown. It is as long as it takes to get through each of the stream's goals. They can be short, they can be longer, um, but overall we just kind of get through each of the streams things these are to keep them kind of streamlined um i don't have a lot of uh um i don't have a lot of stream endurance so it's good that these are kind of you know between one and two hours matt hatter says what exactly does uh dash no restore do again just bring up the town yes it brings up the town with a set so this is a, this actually this script that i have here already written uses no restore um, hello, Jolly Phil. Uh, I'm sorry if I announced that wrong. We uh, we are ending. However, this is immediately going to be uploaded to YouTube afterwards. So don't worry. So it brings up this basic estate. You don't have to go through the loading menu or anything, and it will give you all of the heroes. However, you won't have uh, Jolly Phil. It won't have all the trinkets. I couldn't share the, the one to give trinkets. Um, so sorry. Yes, the chat is an overlay up here um, that will appear not only in Twitch VODs, but it will appear in YouTube VODs. So no restore does just bring up this and you can instantly go in and check things. So again, we have like our healing potions. Yeah, very nice. So for next stream, um, which is again Monday on the 17th, at the same time, 
we will be creating an affix. We're actually going to start to get into enemies. And then we're going to be talking about encounters. And those are, of course, uh, very simple to understand, of course. And then we're going to be getting into camping skills. So we're going to have some, some very new things next time. We're going to have a lot of new uh, stuff to talk about, a lot of new stuff to explain. Um, but it should be fun. Yes, I would not stream every bad word you know. I have I have warned people that this is not a, a family friendly stream, but I, I'm you know I'm not gonna like go out of my way to be older. So neat. It's just a modding stream. Are there any last questions before we uh, call for the day? Well, thank you. We have seven more streams to go. A lot more to talk about. And I do apologize for the audio clipping uh, that's not intended. I don't know what's causing it. I know a couple of uh, other big Twitch streamers have had the problems before in the past. Um, yes, you did miss the stream. I do apologize that it is at, uh, it's at 1 p.m. CST. It's always going to be there. It starts at... 10 minutes earlier just to get you guys in here and get you all warmed up. You can look at the schedule while we're waiting. Gotta learn how to work with Spine so I can make the enemy classes with your friends. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot go over um, Spine. We're not, we're not going to be going over actually working with art because I don't know art. I'm just a designer. Alright, only an hour ahead. So you're on the East Coast. Well, thank you again. We had a pretty lengthy stream for me. A pretty lengthy stream, about an hour and a half. And uh, I will see you all Monday. Again, if you missed any of this stuff, we will be, I will be uploading this immediately after stopping to YouTube. And um, so you can catch it all there. I did switch the recording to 1080p. I accidentally had it on. 1366 by 768, which is about 720 before, so this stream should be perfect quality compared to the last couple ones. And uh, I will look into the audio popping. Um, so thank you again. Uh, thank you for the bear hugs. Hopefully when we publish this mod eventually, you'll get your Russian quirk. Um, I will give you 15 seconds for closing work. Thank you. I was not, I did not used to be so organized. When I first started modding, uh, it was terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I can actually open that up. I think I have PBD's change log here. We can take a look quickly at one of my original change logs. So you can see here, these are my original change logs to PBD way back when, version alpha, February 9th of 2015. It's pretty crazy. I even removed death blow resistance in this. I quickly reverted it afterwards though. That was a bad idea. Don't remove death blow resistance. It's really not a good idea. Don't do that. But uh, thank you again for showing up, and uh, I will see you all Monday. Take care.